And uh, we'll take a look then. Our first verse will be Deuteronomy 8. And I was listening to Brother Eric. And he was talking about remembering things. And I thought, man, why is he saying all that? That's what I'm preaching on, remembering things. <laughs> and it's just amazing how things work out sometimes. Um, I remember reading a story in the Bible and uh, about Joseph when he was in prison. And he interpreted a couple of dreams by some guys in, in the prison. And the Bible says uh, that the Lord caused him, Joseph, to have a good spirit and that all the people in the prison liked him. Yep. And uh, prison usually be a fearful place to be, but he had a lot of friends. They just, he just, God caused them uh, to like him. And the Bible says that he interpreted uh, the dream to one of the guys and the guy, uh, the dream was fulfilled and he was restored to his, I think it was the butler, butler. Yep. that the butler got his job back. Yep. And Joseph said, if you get your job back, tell Pharaoh that I did this. Don't forget me. And once you get out of here, you're going to have a tendency to forget me. Don't forget me. And the guy said, yeah, yeah, I won't forget. But he did. And Joseph stayed another couple of years because he just forgot. And I'm glad he wasn't dependent on me because I'd have probably forgot too. But it's easy to do. Um, one guy said, a well-trained memory is one that permits you to forget everything that isn't worth remembering. Uh, even animals have memory. Uh, I think I've told you the story about Alan. You don't like stories. I'll tell you a story. Uh, Alan was a Navy guy, and he got, he got uh, leave during the weekend, and he's still in his dress whites, you know. And there was an organ grinder monkey out there. And so the crowd was all gathered around. The monkey was going around dancing and t pulling his hand out and getting tips from the people. And he'd run up to the organ grinder and put the tip in the jar and then run back out and get another nickel and go back up and do that back and forth. And uh, so Alan, uh, our, uh, this is a friend of mine, a true story. So he's standing there and he's smoking a cigarette like Navy guys do, some of them. And uh, monkey's working the crowd. He comes around, puts his hand out. And so Al Aragon, he takes his cigarette and puts it in the monkey's hand. Instead of a coin, he puts the cigarette in the monkey's hand. Well, the monkey looks at him and screams, yeah, and runs back up on the little guy's shoulder. And he just was scared, you know, that he got hurt like that. And he could see that monkey was wounded. Two weeks go by and they're back there and he sees the, the monkey grinder again. And he goes out there and this time he's just standing watching. Monkey's working the crowd again and gets to him and locks eyes on him and remembers him. And he goes, yeah, 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 and he takes off after my friend. You remember Al Aragon, don't you? You were just little then. But he goes running down the street, and this monkey is on his tail, catches him, grabs a hold of his, his, uh, his thigh right here, and bites into his calf and tears him up really. Put him in the hospital. So even animals remember. <laughs> so we got no excuse. All right, Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou shouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And so he says here, uh, beware that you don't forget the way the Lord led you. Uh, some of you are two or three years old in the Lord. Some of you are five or ten years old in the Lord. Some of you guys are 30 years old in the Lord. Don't forget the way that the Lord has led you. You ever wonder why you're here at Bayview Baptist Church? Yeah. Why? Well, how is it that you found a Bible-believing church in a strange place like Southern California? When they're so far and few, how did you find it? What was it 
that caused you to be here. Just remember how the God has, don't, don't think it, it just happened on it. Uh, God, God had provided for you. Amen. Uh, remember all the things that the Lord has done for you to get you to the place you're at now. Some of you used to be sick because of drunkenness, and you're not anymore. Some of you used to be addicted to some certain drugs, and you're not anymore. Remember the things that God has done. Don't forget that. Don't don't get so so uh, enjoying the good life that you have that you forget how God brought you to the place that you enjoy now. And, and God told Israel, he told them, as you went through the wilderness, there were times I made sure that you got hungry. Because I wanted to see what you would do about it. And you murmured. You dumb idiots, you murmured. And you rebelled against me, but it didn't matter. I wanted to show you who I was. So I rained manna down from heaven, and I fed you in the wilderness. Don't forget. <laughs> Even when you were a scoundrel, I took care of you. Even when you didn't behave well, I took care of you. I provided for you every step of the way. Never forget the pit that Jesus Christ dug you out of and set you up on a solid rock. Don't forget. Don't forget to thank him when you get fed. You don't, you know, you, you watch food grow. It's an amazing thing. The sun shines on it. Uh, these last, now, Robert and Sheila, you're up north, so you get more clouds than we do probably. But it has been cloudy Every single day in Southern California for the last two months at least. I planted some beautiful, and, and they sprung up. I've got some tomato plants. I got four tomato plants. I got, I got three zucchini plants. I've got three bell pepper plants. And boy, uh, two months ago, they took off and they flowered up. And I got a little piece of fruit. And then the sun didn't come out for a couple weeks. And not only did it not come out, but it's been cold. And those, those little brand new fruits are going, is this fall? <laughs> Trying to figure out if I should come out here or if I should go back in. A lot of it just fell off. I'm telling you, it's been a nightmare for the plants. You say, why are you saying that? Because we eat every day. Yeah. And God grows food every day. And it takes sun and it takes rain. Amen. And, and, and all he has to do to starve everybody out is hold back some of that stuff. Yeah. But he doesn't do it. He's very gracious. N never forget when you sit down to eat a meal that it, it's, it's not just because you work hard and make money. And, and thank God you do because if you don't work, neither should you eat. But if you do work, then you should eat. Uh, but still, God has to provide it. Yes, sir. Because you can't buy it unless it's there to buy. And he, and he brings it out. God is the one who clothes us. Yeah. We are clothed today because our clothes come from an animal or they come from a plant. Yeah. And God grows both of those. That's right. And you can't close yourself without God. Right. And without God, you'd be like Adam and Eve in the garden. And that, that'd be a fact. So thank him and remember to thank him. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Amen. So remember the way that God brought you. Never, never forget the way that God brought you. I remember when... Pablo told me, he said, uh, Brother Andrews, we were, we were in a little church down the street. And he said, Brother Andrews, there's an old, there's an old uh, building up the street that's going up for sale. And, uh, and it's been dormant for years. And the people that own it are, are, want to get out from underneath the taxes. They're not going to ever use it again. They know that. They don't want to pay taxes on it, so they're letting it go. Would you be interested and he was thinking in his mind that I would not be because it was a very shabby building. Yeah. The lot next door was all grown over with weeds. Yeah. The parking lot here was all busted up and yeah. big old orange posts sticking up there. And it was a mess. Yes, it was. But I came up here and looked at it and I just happened to be right in the middle of journeyman status in building walls and stuff like that. So I knew, I knew what to do and I knew what to see. So I walked in here and it ju I just saw it. I just saw a beautiful church building. It looked horrible. Uh, but we came in here and one of the guys had a motorcycle and he drove it in through the front door because it was all dark in here. It was at night we were looking at it and he turned on his headlight and everything and lit the place up and I go, yeah, this is it. <laughs> and, uh, and so God gave us this building. We paid 181000 for this building. 
And then we took out a $40,000 loan, I think, a couple years later. And so it went back up a little bit, but uh, we paid it off. And it's completely 100% paid for now. But during the, I say that because in the beginning, it was a real dilapidated, horrible-looking building. Yep. Yes, and God, God gave us all the walls we're looking at. Now, I'm, yep. I'm serious. We, no, we didn't pay for any of it. Right. We, didn't pay for, we didn't pay for the ceiling. We didn't pay for the lights. We didn't pay for the paint. Yep. We didn't pay for anything. There was a construction company that heard that we were trying to remodel and make a church, and they donated all the material, everything, the walls, the studs, screws, hangers, everything we needed to build. Uh, the guy that owned the construction company asked me to make a list of stuff that I did, that, uh, that I needed, and I made a two-page list of stuff that we needed to build this. And about two months later, out come right. two big old semis and dropped off all the materials That's that we've right. been enjoying for years now. Right. Don't forget where God had led me. God gave us our building. God gave us a nice building. Uh, the, the, the guy out here that did the alley decided to pour our part. We, had, we own 20 feet from this wall to the middle of the alley. 20 feet is not city, it's ours. We own it. And he came up to redo the alley and left me with broken up, shabbily, horrible looking uh, place to park. But it, I'm not city, so he couldn't, he couldn't do mine. He snapped the line between our property and theirs. And I went out and I said, hey, aren't you going to fix this too? He goes, no, that's your property. I says, I says, yeah, yeah, that's our property. But I was hoping maybe you could, since you're here with all your, maybe you could fix it up. He goes, no way. Who are you anyway? I said, well, I pastor the church. He says, oh, you're a pastor. I'm a Christian. I says, you are. What's your name? And he says, my name is Mr. Green. I forget his first name. And I said, why don't you come in here and take a look at our little church? And we were just getting going. And I brought him through here. And he says, this is a nice little building. Man, brother, this is cool. Don't tell nobody, but we'll do it. I says, all right, man. Great. He poured 10 inches of concrete out there for us. And he poured, he poured a curb all along the side so that the rain, when it come down the hill, wouldn't hit us. All free. We didn't pay a dime. Paul, we didn't pay a dime. That parking lot out there, we bought the concrete. None of the labor. All the labor was donated to us. The baptistry was given to us by a Catholic church. That's why they gave it to us. They bought a church building and it had a baptistry. We don't baptize. Hey, yeah. I forget. Oh, uh, somebody came in my office. I was working for a fu funeral home at the time. I'm sitting there working. He comes in and says, hey, hey. Oh, I, oh, I almost remember who it was. Oh, I came close for that one. He went in and went right back out. But he came in and he says, you, you got a little church going over in San Peter. I said, yeah. He says, do you need a baptistry? I said, yeah. He says, I got one for you. I said, where is it? Right down the street. Catholic Church bought this Baptist church. And they ain't going to baptize. And they're tearing the baptism out. It's, it, they're pulling it out right now with a big old tow motor. It's solid steel baptistry. He said, maybe, maybe you want to come and look and see if it'll fit. I rolled out there. I looked. I said, man, that'll fit just fine. I went home, got my truck, went back out there. They lowered that thing on the back of my truck. My truck was doing a wheelie all the way here. No kidding, man. Like 2 o'clock in the morning, I had to transport that thing. I was afraid to get a ticket, you know. Got that thing in here, wheeled it in here through those doors, and put it in there and made a battery free. Don't forget the way the Lord brought thee. Yeah. Now, that's just a building. What about your life? How did Jesus Christ get your attention? Remember the day that you were concerned. Remember the day that you thought, I think I'll go check it out. Remember the day that you went in and God spoke to your heart and said, you're lost. You need to get saved. Remember the day. And then not only that, but look, at how, look what he did. Look how when Jesus Christ came into your house, look what he did. When Jesus Christ came into my house, he saved my children. He saved my mom and my dad. Don't forget what God has done. God has just been amazing. And uh, it's, it, it wouldn't be good to forget something like that. But it would sure be right to remember the way that the Lord has brought you. All right, number two is found in Deuteronomy 8, 11. Beware, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. <laughs> now see how I do that, Brother Steve? I didn't, I didn't sound like a foghorn going off. See that? You got to open those sinuses, brother. I'm teasing him. He always, he always makes a loud noise. 
Beware thou, forget not the Lord thy God, in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And so uh, don't forget his instruction. Okay. Now, I know you go back to the Old Testament and the commandments, and I know we're in the New Testament. Things have changed through the years, and Christ made a new covenant. I understand that, but we're still getting instruction. Right. Don't forget the instruction that you get. This instruction has caused you to be where you're at today. And if you don't have this, nothing's changed. You're still the same. People that get saved and don't get instruction, they still look the same, they still talk the same, they still act the same. But when they get different instruction, it changes their, changes their way. It changes their viewpoint. It changes their attitude. It changes everything. This is what molds us. This is what shapes us. Never forget all the instruction that you've got. The Christian you are today is however you surrender to this. And when Jesus Christ said some things to you that weren't, weren't good and uh, he changed you and you got that change from the correction that's in the Bible. The many blessings you get are just a result of his instruction. Uh, you don't get in trouble anymore for lying. I hope. You don't get in any trouble anymore for drunkenness. I hope. You don't get... Uh, in trouble anymore for cheating, I hope, do right, amen, for gossiping, for lewdness, for bragging, and on and on the list goes. Right. Say, why don't I get in trouble for those things anymore? Remember your instruction. You forget your instruction, you go, you go back to it eventually. Right. And they always remember the way that the Lord brought you and the, destruction that he's, the instruction that he's given you. Uh, you're in Deuteronomy 8, notice verse 12. <laughs> Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built godly, goodly houses, and dwelt therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. See that blessed life through God's instruction? <coughs> Excuse me. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee... Forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And so he says there, uh, don't forget. And uh, your heart would be lifted up. And uh, the reason he says that is because sometimes we think we're doing so good because we're smart. Or we think we're doing so good because we know, we know what's going on. We know what's happening. We're, we, we, we got it going on. You know, we're smarter than the idiots down there that are suffering. No, God's just been good to you. He's been gracious to you and merciful to you. And you're enjoying life like this. And if you don't, if you don't think that's true, go hook up with a lost person for about three or four days. And you'll see how different it is. It's totally different. You get hooked up with a lost person for three or four days, you will go, man, why am I going with this guy? I'm getting in trouble at every turn. I'm not used to that. Amen? God, God, I tell you, God takes care of his children. And he walks with you and he talks with you. And, uh, and the, the, the instruction here is, uh, remember God's instruction. And don't forget the Lord thy God and how he uh, prospered you the way that he has. And the Bible says in verse 15, Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought. Now, you're going to have to spiritualize that because that didn't happen to us, except spiritually. You got you to let that sink in a little bit. It, it did happen, but we didn't see fiery serpents, but spiritually we did. There were, there were spiritual evils that came, came our way. And, uh, and the Bible says, uh, fiery serpents and scorpions in drought where there was no water. Who brought thee forth water? Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end? How do you think they felt when they went into the wilderness and got hungry, and instead of praying and asking God to feed them, uh, they complained and murmured and rebelled against God and Moses? 
And then Moses uh, uh, got with God, and God decided to be merciful to them, even though he hated their murmuring. And he told Moses to tell them that I hate their murmuring. Uh, but he says, uh, you go out tomorrow, and you're going to find a lot of quail on the ground. Or you're going to find a lot, of ma uh, a lot of manna on the ground. How do you think they felt? You ever murmur and complain about something, and then the guy you complain with blesses you greatly, and you go, oh, man, I wish I'd never said nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it humbles you, doesn't it? You go, oh, man, I should have never said anything. I should have known God would do that. Why, why did I murmur? Why did I complain? And, uh, and uh, so when, when, they, when they went out the next day to find all that food on the ground, if they were sensible, reasonable people, they had to go, man, I don't know why I still complain. I watched God turn the water to blood. I watched God turn lice everywhere and frogs and I've, I've seen God open the Red Sea for us to come through now I'm hungry why am I murmuring and complaining and humbles you to see that God answers your prayers yeah. and uh, so God calls the remembrance caused their mind to think about all the things that God did to bring them to the place that they're at when Jesus takes you through the fiery trial and the deep waters it is supposed to humble you it lets you know he's still there Never forget how good the Lord is, Amen. how he tenderly cares for you. He knows all the heartaches and hardships and disappointments. Yeah. The Wheaton family got in a car wreck. And was it the dad? The mom. The mom she, got hit by a car, a car she got hit by a car and she looks like she's going to perish. She's got children and she's got a husband. And you think to yourself, what are they going to do? Oh, how hard is it going to be? Yes. They will, if she dies, those children will have to learn to get through life without a mom. If he decides not to remarry, and he probably won't for quite some time, they will have to see God perform well for them. They will have to see God do some things that they will give him credit for later. That husband will go through some times and sorrows, and he will be like one of these songwriters who... Because these are Christians, this is a Christian family. And when the, Brother Eric made mention of it, and some of, the, some of the times when these guys wrote those songs, they were going through some heavy, heavy hardships. And those hardships caused them to reach out to God. Those hardships caused them to put their faith and trust in God. And then when they do, they see God come through and get them through. And that's what this Wheaton family is going to go through. So yes, it is a horrible thing that has happened. But remember, wherever there's horribleness, God shows himself strong for his chosen people. And he will get them through. If they will stay with him and stay and, and learn, lean on him, they will be able to testify some great things in years to come. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 8 and verse 5 says, Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord God... Thy God chasteneth thee. And uh, it, it's, it's to do thee good at the latter end. It's uh, when, when, when my father would discipline me, it was to do me good at the latter end. It was to turn me away from things that he knew would be a snare in my life. Uh, when you have a disciplinary father, the society we live in uh, hates that and tries to bring a social worker in. But that's a, that's a wrong, perverse way. God would have the father, when he sees evil in his home, is to drive it out. Drive that evil out of that home. And discipline is the way to do it. And chastening is the way to do it. And chastening is the proof that the father loves his children. And the Bible says if you uh, do not get chastened, then you're not loved. It's not a quote, but that's what the Bible says. It says, uh, God loveth everyone whom he chasteneth. And, uh, or no, he chasteneth everyone who, who he receiveth, something like that. You find that in Hebrews chapter 12, I believe. And there's a whole chapter devoted to a chastening father. And he likens it to our father who chastens us. And so there are times when t hard times do come, like this Wheaton family. It may not be a chastisement, but it's still a hardship and still trouble. And that's where you lean on God the most. And troubles have that one beautiful thing about them, is it causes you to get close to God. Now, there's been times where I would get some horrible news in my life. There's been times when you have got horrible news. And as soon as you get it, you go, oh, Lord. And it drives you to your knees right away. 
I mean, ain't, ain't two minutes go by and you're on your knees praying. And when troubles come, boy, your prayer life increases quite drastically. Yes, sir. Yeah, because you know that only God can help. And then when he does, you look back and you go, I'm never going to forget. Never going to forget what you did for me, Lord. I think it was when they went through the Red Sea. I forget who it was, if it was Joshua or who it was, but they erected a pillar on the other side. And the pillar was just for a reminder. So when you guys get to this place and see that pillar, let that pillar be the reminder of that great day when God brought us through the Red Sea. Remember that great day when you got saved? Remember that great day? And I didn't think much of it when it happened, but a guy named Mike Moore was trying to get me to go to church. And to me, it was, okay, all right, I'll go. I had no idea what a great day that was. And, and still, it's hard for me to fathom what a great yeah. day that was. Yeah. When I get to heaven, it'll be opened up for me, I'm sure. Uh, but that was a great day yes, because sir. that's where I got to see. That's where I got to consider something I'd never considered before. And God brought me to that place. Yeah. God brought me to that place. Good. It's still our choice, but God presents himself. It is good to be a child of God. He said that he would never leave. That he would bless me. He has kept his word. All right, lastly tonight, uh, remember how you were. Remember how you were. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 7. I'll tell a little bit on my wife tonight. She's always the guinea pig a lot of times. Um, my wife, as a young girl, ran with a pretty rough bunch of girls. And just lost and looking for a good time and out drinking and doing whatever and walking through Wilmington and church service going on in Wilmington and the doors were open. Uh, I guess they were singing in there. Were they singing in there? And her and uh, was it? I can't remember her name now. And, and Tony. Her name was Tony. And they had a half a bottle of wine left over, you know. And Satan got in him and said, let's throw this in the church service. Is that what it was? You threw the bottle? Was Francis or you, one of y'all, threw the, threw the bottle? Can you imagine, imagine being in church, have a wine bottle break, and that fragrance come up and glass go everywhere? Well, that stopped the, stop the song yeah. service in a heartbeat, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then, of course, they just went on laughing. Remember where you were. Yeah. Remember how you used to be. Yeah. It's not that way now. Yeah. Some of those memories are harsh memories. Some of those memories you, you don't want to remember. Yes. But, but it, it, it's to the credit of God that it's not that way anymore. Yes. Uh, there are some things that I shudder at. I don't like thinking about it. And uh, as some of you have, have been, been, some of you were in some very, very evil situations, very wicked situations. Uh, Norman Carrillo pastors a church up in uh, Tenino, Washington. And he was in this church as a young man, and he got saved in this church and got called to preach in this church. And before he got saved, uh, he was a real good friend to our uh, number two son, David Bernal. <clears throat> and those two got into dope and got running the streets of Wilmington and different places and got, on, got into drugs pretty heavy. And uh, they were going up to cars full of people that had the dope and they had the money and going up there and running the deal. And there were a couple of times where fire shots were fired and Norman and Dave were scattering for their lives, literally deals going bad, things happening they didn't expect and death was lurking. That's right. And he'd have to tell you about it. I, yeah. I couldn't give you the details. Yeah. I remember the, yeah. uh, the basics of the stories and yeah. uh, that young man got saved and got out of that drug, became Thank a preacher. God. And now he pastor, he's been pastoring church for probably over 20 years now, up there in Tenino, Washington. We had a young girl in here who was strung out on heroin named Cecilia, Cecilia Lee. We called her C.B. Lee. <laughs> and uh, she come in here in a little old mini skirt, and she was strung out on heroin. And she got in this church, sort of got saved, and married a missionary, and went to India as a missionary. And just remember what you were. Uh, remember some of the place God brought you. Man, remember what he, brought, what, he, what he brought you out of. Yes. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9, 
it says in verse 11, And it came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves, uh, they had made them a molden image. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. Verse uh, 24, uh, Deuteronomy 9, 24. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. <laughs> Comforting words. <laughs> that's you. That's you. That's me. There's rebellion in us. And we're still fighting some of it to this day. But we all have it. And we're, we're in bodies that are contrary to God. And it's a fight. Uh, notice uh, verse 5. Uh, Not for thy righteousness or for thy uprightness of thine heart dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of, the, of these nations, for the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. And that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. The stiff-necked people got the land. The stiff-necked people got the land that other stiff-necked people got. But the other stiff-necked people didn't know the Lord. They knew false gods, and they behaved accordingly, and they weren't worthy of that land. And so God spewed them out of that land and then gave it to Israel. But he told Israel, I'm not giving you this land because you're a righteous people. I'm, I'm taking them out because of the way they are, and I'm, and I'm just giving it to you. He says, uh, ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. And he says, uh, uh, for thou art a stiff-necked people. They were going into the promised land, and they were going to be blessed there by God. God was going to cause them to be full of bread, full of cattle, good springs and water, and good protection, and on and on the list goes. <laughs> you know why, right? I mean, you know why. He's just a gracious God. He's a gracious God. So remember that. Remember that. God's a gracious God. Why should he save the likes of you? you none, none of us merit salvation. The lost people don't understand. They think you have to be good enough to merit it, but you can't merit it. You're, you're evil. You're stiff-necked. You're rebellious people. Uh, God has been gracious to you and I. Every day. Even now. Very gracious to you and I. And uh, never forget who you are. You're human. You're of a fallen race. Yeah, when, when Adam sinned and everybody born from Adam was born into that sin nature and of their own free will has sinned, any good favor that God gives anybody is grace. Yeah. Amen. And God is gracious and kind and good and slow to anger toward his children and generous toward his children. Amen. I shudder to think what I would get if I got what I deserved. Oh, yeah. Amen. And a lot of times when you see a Christian, you say, how you doing? They say, better than I deserve. Yeah. And they're right. And it's always going to be that way. It's never going to be any better than that. It's always going to be, I, I'm getting better than I deserve. And that's the truth. And it is the truth. And if you really believe it, then don't forget who you are. Amen. Amen. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget where you came from, and don't remember the don't forget the way that brought you to the place you're at. All right, let's all stand tonight.